Okay, well, first, uh, welcome everybody to this first Pendula subscription webinar uh, called the subscription experience. And of course, we're all really, really happy that you could join today. And of course, we're hoping uh, that you're all doing well in this, uh, well, let's say turbulent time we're all in. Um, today's webinar will take about one hour. And um, whenever you've got any questions during the session, uh, please feel free to ask questions directly, or you can also use the chat function to raise questions, and uh, we will come back to this um, during this webinar. And of course, finally, at the end, we are or in the upcoming periods, we're always happy to set up one-to-one -one sessions um, to do with you a more personal deep dive and to explore what the definition of a subscription experience could mean for your organization. But uh, how to do that, we will come back to that uh, later this webinar. So the speakers today, it's myself, Timus Uitgeest. I am Managing Director of Subscription Factory. We've got Alex Colvin, CEO and founder of Pendula. And um, we've got Ben, Ben Albrecht. And uh, Ben will do, or will take us through a demonstration later on this webinar. Um, what brings Subscription Factory and Pendula together in this webinar? And why are we hosting this webinar? Well, first of all, um, both companies, we are sharing a passion uh, for enabling customer success in the subscription economy. And uh, both companies, we are helping customers being successful by introducing and implementing a new recurring monetization models. And secondly, both companies, we do have a relationship, of course, with Zubora, one of world's leading subscription billing engines. And uh, at least finally, uh, we both believe that being successful in the subscription economy means that you have to give attention, of course, to your product and pricing models, of course, to your IT landscape, of course, your sales organization. But even more right now, it's important to create yeah, a more or less excellent subscription experience to first of all, increase subscription revenue, increase customer satisfaction, and of course, also to reduce churns as much as possible. So two, cost, two companies are hosting this webinar. First of all, let me introduce myself, um, Subscription Factory. For the people who don't know us, we are founded in uh, 2013. We are based in Haarlem, the Netherlands. And well, uh, we are one of the world's most successful and I think also most trusted partners from day one. So we are working with Zora already for more than six, seven, eight years. We've got uh, roughly 30 people working for us. And um, our main goal is supporting customers with re remonetizing their business models. And what we've done, I think over the recent years is around 45 mm -hmm. Zora implementations. Small ones, big ones, interesting ones, bad ones. Well, we've seen everything. So, um, it were really, I think, uh, definitely exciting, exciting year so far. And the, the companies we are working for are mainly, well, three, we can divide them actually in three types. Starters, companies which are launching subscription models from day one, companies which are in SaaS, and they say, well, what we are going to sell should be done by subscriptions from day one. Secondly, companies which are more or less scale-ups, which are already selling their businesses based on subscriptions. But uh, where there is a need to replace legacy or to automate their subscription processes in a better way to be ready for the future or to create a fit for the future. And other customers we are actually working for mainly right now. And that's what we call the reinventors. And that are the companies which are in the process of reinventing themselves. So all kinds of traditional companies selling their the goods, selling their services on a transactional basis, which, which right now are in the, in the phase, okay, how can we set up different kind of customer engagements and how can we create all services on top of what we've been already for, for many years. And besides this, of course, is Pendula. Alex, maybe you can give an introduction yeah. of your company. Well, th thank you, Timo, and thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, you know, the, the benefit really of this COVID lockdown is that we can you know, connect with each other you know, cross borders without you know, too much disruption. So you know, really looking forward to sharing some things that we've been you know, displaying within the Zora ecosystem for the last uh, three years. Uh, specifically, we've been at, at subscribed in the US and in London, uh, Singapore. Uh, you can probably tell from my accent uh, that we uh, 
were originally founded in Sydney, Australia. Um, actually, a lot of sort of pedigree is within our business. Uh, both myself and Tim, who's on the call, uh, are ex Zora uh, team members from a few years back. Uh, and we really have bought into this subscription economy. Um, you know, this really lines up to how uh, Timo and his business has lined up with Pendula uh, in our passion for you know, really enabling not only subscription excellence, but also what, re what Pendula's really dived into, which is the subscription experience and you know, some of the key things we're gonna touch on today. Uh, we're proud to be one of the only external Zora native applications that's on the platform. Um, we have a you know, very strong close relationship with Zora uh, and the technologies are tied very closely together. Um, on top of the Zora capability, what we're really, really looking to do here is be the heart of every customer conversation. And this is really true as to what Pendula is. Um, when I say customer conversation, we are referring to digital conversations. So think um, SMS messages back and forth, uh, think emailing back and forth on social media, um, conversations that are direct message back and forth. And what Pendula seeks to be is that heart between the customer and the subscription business that they are receiving services from. I've got a lot of validation today. We've got 80, over 80 customers now all over the world from uh, Europe to the US to Asia uh, and Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and to date, we've now enabled over 10 million conversations. We're gonna be playing some of the experiences that we've seen within those businesses that we've been supporting over the last several years. But really what we're about is shifting broadcasting messages to, subscri to subscribers and enabling a conversation with them. And we're gonna, again, dive into some of these conversations. You'll see also Pendula really lining up to the subscription factoring where their key focuses are. So again, starters, scale-ups, and this key thing, the reinventors. And this is really where these two businesses of the subscription factory and Pendula really lining up uh, and being able to not only provide capability, but also the consultative expertise to level up the evolution in your subscription journey. I uh, was so looking forward to covering off a lot of these points today. I'm going to hand back to Timo first to just run through some of the agenda and uh, some really key points around what the evolutions are presenting within the subscription universe and the subscription experience in itself. So Timo, back over to you, mate. Uh, Timo, just uh, your uh, audio is uh, is muted there. Yeah, so, thank you, Alex. There we go. Yeah, I think this is one of the, the this is one of the most make, make mistakes I think right now in the remote world. So everybody is still remote when they have to say something. But anyway, um, thank you. So company company introductions we are done. So the agenda for today is that I will well I will tell you guys uh, yeah in a few minutes uh, what's going on or actually what we are facing in the market around the evolution of subscription commerce and then it's all about subscription experience subscription relationship and of course some some real world examples uh, that were done by by Ben so <clears throat> to the next slide please and um, just on refresh so um, for you all uh, okay, so what's, what's driving the subscription economy? And um, I think it are mainly four things that we are facing right now. Of course, first of all, it's all about creating a sustainable revenue creation. It's all about sustainable revenue. So whenever you ask a CFO or CEO what they like the most about the subscription economy, and you will probably get the answer as, as sustainable and revenue. And, and, and that's what a subscription driven monetization model will deliver you, yeah? when you are able to work out the best subscription market combination. Of course, the other thing which is driving the subscription economy, that's, that's technology. So more and more what we see is that IoT and the digital world driving all kinds of different markets to all kinds of new monetization models. And um, yeah, that's what we see happening more and more. And also traditional uh, marketing and also, of course, traditional marketing automation tools are not really suitable for driving this process anymore. So I think that's also the great thing about, about a company like, like Pendula, because they are making the bridge or they have created the bridge between the, the new way of marketing automation in combination yeah, with subscription businesses. 
And of course, the other thing which is driving the subscription commerce, that's of course, um, yeah, the change of customer demand. You know, ship of goods is becoming less important. Why should you buy a car when you can subscribe to the mobility concept? Um, why should you still buy a razor blade where you can subscribe a service for that? And why to go into a shop every day for your food, your drinks, when you can subscribe a food box? So these are all kinds of examples how companies are right now with, with redefining or reinventing themselves. And there are also all kinds of ways how they are trying to unburden their customers. And finally, the thing which is driving, of course, the subscription economy, that's, yeah, that's simplifying or try to simplify your sales process. So give your customers the freedom to subscribe themselves and give them all kinds of tools so they can nurture their own subscriptions. But of course, also based on messaging again, what you as a company can share with your customers and what you think what's the best for your customers. But it's just a small refresh of constantly the four main things, what we see, what's driving the subscription economy. And based on the project that we have done as a subscription factory over the last over the last years, then in the early days it was all about um, yeah helping customers with um, uh, it was helping customers with with setting up a core subscription billing engine. So it was mainly about billing billing. We would like to sell our service as subscription, so we need a billing engine for that. And then after that we saw that there was a more focus. So Four or five years ago, there was more focus on, okay, we've got our subscription billing engine up and running, but right now we like to also integrate CRM systems with that. And um, we would like to start also with direct sales. We would like to, to boost our direct sales. So then we saw for, I think, a number of years that there wasn't, um, that there wasn't, uh, yeah, an, 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 an heavily need to, to support customers with, for example, integrating Salesforce.com, Microsoft Dynamics. And after that, and that's I think where we're still right now in, is that our customers are also busy with creating customer portals, um, creating self-service portals. And what you see is that is that subscription sales is moving more and more to the web. So um, that's definitely something which is going on right now. And uh, in parallel, we believe that the next chapter of subscription commerce um, that will be, or that is around creating a subscription experience. So besides that you're able to build subscriptions, besides you're able to sell it directly via an, an CRM integration, and when you're all, uh, when you can already support it via the web portal, right now I think, or we think that the next chapter is, okay, we have to help customers with setting up a subscription experience. Well, I'm thinking that's actually where it's all about for today. So right now I would like to hand over the microphone to you, Alex. Beautiful. Th thank you there, Timo. So th this is the key thing, what, what, what Timo's talking about there, the, the subscriber experience. And you know, if we, if we look really at what the investment was, you know, most subscription businesses and how they've been directing their focus over the last you know, several evolutionary stages, it's all been about setting up your backend systems, um, ensuring that we've got the capability to actually support the types of services that we're enabling. If, you know, that, that's a an IoT uh, embedded device in a white goods um, like offering. That's a publishing business. But the next shift that we're now able to take advantage of, and you know, we have so many customers that have invested in a, a solution like Zora uh, and invested in CRMs like Salesforce that now are ready to start focusing on that subscriber experience and what that looks like. Uh, today, we're going to take a different tactic, what's normally you'll, you'll experience with. Um, how we explore certain topics. And what we're going to be doing today is running through a bit of the story. We're going to meet a subscriber and we're also going to meet a business that she subscribes to. I'm going to talk about what's important for them. Uh, then what we're going to do is look at how the technology can actually enable an experience that our subscriber wants. So let's go through this. So first up here, we have Sally. Now, Sally is a subscriber and someone that a lot of us can all really relate to. She's someone that you know, has really bought into this concept of her consistent long-term relationship with her service providers. Um, she's now in a position where she no longer just values the product that she has, has purchased on a recurring basis, but she also now is really valuing experiences. And what we're actually finding with a lot of subscription businesses and there's countless studies that are really backing this up. Price is no longer a differentiator for Sally. Sally now 
cares more about her experience with these service providers that she's now interacting with on a recurring basis, so much so that her experience is actually the differentiator here in what is a good service or a bad service that she's re you know, really receiving. And on the other side of Sally is Acme. So Acme is our subscription business today. Um, everyone who's, on, who's joined the webinar today is an Acme Co. Right? And really this is a subscription business here that is understanding one, who Sally is and what Sally's needs are. We've pivoted our products, we've pivoted our technology stacks to support Sally and what she needs. But the core of what Sally needs is not only receiving a service, but the subscription experience that sits on top of that. You know, we need to be able to anticipate when positive events are going to happen to Sally and promote them. And when a negative event is going to happen, we need to mitigate them as fast as we possibly can. And this is really core to this key thing that exists between Acme and Sally, which is very unique. And this is their relationship. Now together, and this is a really key point that everyone really is probably bought into already, that the relationship between Sally and Acme is very unique. When we've shifted from per unit selling models to now these subscription focused relationships, what matters is that Sally and Acme have a consistent relationship that is not only proactive, but it's bi-directional. And what that means is, and this is the, the real unique side to this relationship, is that Sally has a voice. Now the voice that Sally had is really valuable to Acme and all of our subscription businesses uh, because Sally is going to be telling us what's working for her, what's not working for her. If she wants to you know, increase using the product in a certain way, if she wants to add on features, if she wants to you know, add on a warranty or add on um, you know, a, a replacement of a service that she has previously. If she wants to go from one masthead in a magazine business to another masthead that she might also want to enjoy. Now, on top of that, her voice is so valuable that she wants to actually tell Acme more about her needs and experience than what she's asked. And this is something that's really valuable here. And there's, there's a few things that I want everyone to take out of today about the subscriber experience. And that is that firstly, Sally wants to talk to you. And we'll talk through some of the stats that we've really experienced on this subscription side. So Sally wants to talk to you. On top of that, what she has to say is really valuable. It's not only about asking Sally, would you like to upgrade or would you like to pause your subscription? It's Sally, what would you actually like? And what we're seeing here in our experience with our customers with over 10 million conversations to date is 17% of the time that we ask Sally something, she's going to tell us something different. She'll answer the original question, don't get me wrong, she won't just completely ignore the, the first prompt, but she'll provide feedback beyond that. And that'll be feedback about our competitors, about how we can improve our service, about you know, how she might want to increase the services that she's you know, already acquiring from Acme Co. Now, the key thing with this is that when she's providing this value, and this is the third thing. So Sally wants to tell us things, she wants to speak to us, the things that she's telling us that is and will be very valuable. But on top of that, if we make it easy for her and she's valuing her experience, she's going to spend more money with us and she's going to engage more. And this is huge, right? This is a, a, a real, real milestone event in how you can shift your business from one that is servicing customers to managing relationships with customers. And that is, if we can give Sally a voice, if we can hear her and we can make it easier for her, Acme is going to have an unfair advantage against its competitors in the subscription economy. And it's gonna see some big, big results here. And we've seen some really significant results, some snapshots here across the customer base that we have right now. And again, this is over tens of millions of conversations. We've seen when you enable someone to respond back to a message, if that's an email or an SMS or a WhatsApp, whatever that would be, we're going to have greater than 30% interaction rates. And this is huge, right? We're now going from a world where previously we were using 
our marketing automation tools for things that weren't designed, they weren't designed for. Marketing automation tools were designed for these nurture paths and you know, getting people to the point of acquisition. But once they become a customer, if we can allow people to respond back in the same place that we reached out to them, 30% of the time they're going to respond back. Comparing that to 7 to 8%, which is industry best practice of email click-through rates. It's a huge opportunity here to be able to really increase the interaction of our customers. And Ben's going to show us how we can automate this today uh, and trigger these interactions at key points in the life cycle of our subscriber. Now, on top of that, these 30% of people who are going to interact with us, 17% of those 30% of those people are going to give us feedback beyond what we ask them. This is invaluable, invaluable feedback. We have seen so many businesses that spend huge budgets trying to run data science over what their customers want. And they haven't even just tried asking them. This is live, consistent, scalable feedback. And on top of that, if we are enabling an upsell or cross-sell like conversion, which carries with it a significant ROI because it's revenue driven, if we're using a conversational like experience with our subscribers, we're gonna be able to see greater than 16% upsell and cross-sell conversion. This is real material results here that we're gonna see from Sally. If that's selling more magazines, if that's going from the silver package to the gold package for our SaaS business, if this is us running an IoT-like service on top of white goods and you know, servicing that customer with more frequent servicing or you know, a replacement of that service or that device in a more rapid time frame, this is real value to the subscription businesses doing this. But on top of this, we're servicing our Sally's and we're giving Sally an experience that she's never seen before and differentiating ourselves as a result for that. Now, of course, this is a Nirvana state, right? This sounds fantastic and everyone will sit there and agree that we want to provide experiences like Sally. Now, how do we actually do that? And the real question here is, how do we make an experience like this scalable? We can't be throwing people at this problem. We need technology to enable these experiences for two reasons. One is a cost of acquisition needs to be maintained. We can't be blowing out uh, our service costs by having one person per client uh, in managing that relationship. But also on top of that, the timeliness of these communications need to be data-driven. We need to be sitting into the source systems of Zora and Salesforce and our production systems to ensure that we're triggering these experiences with Sally when she needs to be engaged. So we're gonna look at this today and we've, we've got um, Ben who's kindly joined us and Ben's gonna show us how this works. Um, we are gonna just swap screens for a second so Ben can take control of the webinar here. Um, but we're gonna see how this is possible within a tool like Pendula. Now, of course, we want you guys to embrace this experience and this evolution irrelevant of our tool. We have an approach to solving this, but of course, it's not the only approach. Um, what we really care about here is creating these experiences for your subscribers and really driving this, this subscription economy forward. So Ben, I'll hand over to you here and if uh, you're able to share your screen and take us through how Sally's gonna have this experience. Great, thank you, Alex, and hello to everyone on the call today. Um, as Alex has just mentioned, um, you know, I'm going to go and take you through, you know, how can we, as let's say a team member at Acme, create an experience for someone like Sally, the subscriber, that's really easy for her to engage with. Um, so using Pendula, we're going to create an experience that's not only relevant, timely, and contextual. We're gonna do it all without the need of having to write any code um, or rely on you know, IT departments or other business user units. So everything that we're gonna to do today is very much driven from a business user perspective. So as that business user at Acme Co, um, we've logged into Pendula and what we're looking at is essentially all of our organizational flows or experiences that are going to you know, reach out and engage with all of our subscribers at various points. Now, you'll notice we've got things that relate to, you know, different life cycles within the customer journey. 
So things driven through campaigns, cases, payments. Um, but what we want to do today is actually create one of these experiences from scratch. So let's go ahead and do that. And really the first step in building any one of these pendular flows is providing some context. So what are we actually talking about here today? So is it in relation to invoicing, payments, subscriptions? Uh, well, in this case, what we want to kind of demonstrate is how can we reach out to our subscribers? How do we reach out to Sally and provide something to her that's actually going to be relevant? And in this case, it's going to be uh, an upsell. Uh, and we might even include uh, some cross-sell components to this use case. Uh, and it will be sent out to uh, existing subscribers. And as that user, we then want to make sure everything is timely. So we've got a few different options here. It can be event driven. It could be driven through things like workflow. Uh, we can trigger things through uh, call outs. So leveraging um, Zora's standard events uh, and notifications framework, as well as any other external platform, which makes something like Pendula uh, a very flexible product. And then finally, um, on a schedule. So as, um, as a user within the organization, I want to send this at a time that's going to be relevant to, to an individual. So in this case, I'm going to send it simply once and we'll be sending it in uh, Sydney time zone, which is where I'm sitting at the moment. So let's say it's going to be 12 PM tomorrow, which is Friday. And that's really going to make sure that it's timely. So I'm actually determining when this is going to be sent out. But finally, I want to make sure this is relevant. I want to make sure that um, I'm only reaching out to my subscribers that uh, I'm looking to target based on the information that I've captured, uh, maybe through subsequent conversations or previous conversations, I should say, uh, or other engagements that we've had with our subscriber base um, so that we can make these uh, really relevant and um, appealing to our, our subscriber base. So the way I'm going to do that is simply to find who are we sending it to via some simple criteria. So I'm going to use my standard um, data model within Zora uh, to select from the individuals that I'd like to target in this case. So first of all, I'll be looking at um, my subscriptions. Uh, I only want to target subscribers that are active. Of course, I don't want to look at anyone else that is currently uh, either pending or, or cancelled or draft. I'm only looking for active subscribers. Um, I also want to look at subscribers that are probably thinking about um, renewing. So uh, their renewal date might be coming up. So I'll be selecting from uh, the subscription once again and looking at the next renewal date. Now here, because this is a date driven um, attribute, I want to kind of use um, a bit of a window. So I'm going to say is equal to um, not a specific or a discrete date value. I might want to say, you know, is equal to today um, plus uh, days, let's say 60. And what that's going to say is find me all of my subscriptions that uh, have a renewal date, um, you know, in 60 days time. Um, and I could increase that window. I could have um, a, a larger selection criteria here if I wish, but it allows us to have these set up in a way in which these can run consistently and pick up the relevant subscribers um, in, each use, in each case. Now, finally, I'm going to select some specific um, subscribers based on their rate plans. Um, I've got a special offer as a marketer at Acme Co that I know uh, my subscribers with a specific rate plan are really going to enjoy. So I'm going to target only those individuals that have a rate plan that is named accordingly. Now, as you can see from my rate plan name, we're saying today that Acme Co is uh, more or less a telco um, or a, a mobile phone provider. Um, so that will, will form the, the basis of um, uh, some of the contextual data that you'll see in the demonstration. So as a, a user, as a business user for that matter at Acme Co, really all I've done so far is set up a few things. First of all, I've set some context um, by way of some data in Zora. I've made sure it's timely um, and I've set a specific time for this to occur. And then finally, I've defined the audience. So who are my target subscribers? Who are, who, who's, 
who am I looking to, to reach out to in this particular instance? Now, once I've done so, I can click Save and Next, which really takes us to the, the core part of the Pendulum product, which is where we can define these experiences uh, and enable um, an organization to have uh, these types of uh, engagements with their subscriber base. So what you're looking at is essentially a blank canvas at the moment. And then on the left-hand side, you have your toolbar. So starting from the top, outbound channels. So the ability to um, engage through various channels from an outbound perspective. And then subsequent to that, we have this customer initiated section. So this is really what sets Pendular apart from other products um, in the, is the communication um, space is the ability to define how your subscribers can respond and then subsequently how they should be understood. Now, off the back of those responses, we can then automate downstream processes. So things like uh, workflow actions, as well as some standard things like the ability to add and remove rate plans from customer subscriptions. Alex made a good point before is we want to be able to action things on the channel that our um, subscribers uh, are engaging with. So if we are to provide an offer via SMS, we wanna make sure we can make that change for the subscriber through that communication transaction. So through that SMS conversation. So let's go ahead and build out this experience. I'm gonna start by dragging an SMS node onto the canvas here. And that will bring up my template selection pane on the right hand side. Now I've got a bunch of pre-authored templates um, but for the purpose of today, I'm going to select from one that I've um, already populated. Um, let's see, we've got the free month. So we're looking for, let me just modify this template. We might change that to 40 gigabytes and $40. So what we're doing is we're providing this offer to, to our list of our, our set of subscribers. Now, it's important to note that whilst I'm going straight to the offer in this specific example, specifically because of the time we have available today, we'd normally only really present this to a you know, subscriber after we've established that relationship with someone like Sally through um, you know, some ongoing engagement to really find out what's important to her. But in this case, we're kind of jumping ahead in time, we're going straight to the offer, which will be presented to her via SMS. Now, you'll notice that there's a bit of a call to action in this SMS, we're asking or we're, pro we're prompting her to respond. And I might actually add to this as well. Um, alternatively, um, uh, reply with uh, top up to add on uh, 10 gigabytes for $10. So what I'm doing there is I'm adding a bit of a cross sell uh, into this, this upsell message as well. So we're providing Sally with options in this case, if that's something that she um, wasn't interested in, in um, initially. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now off the back of that response, we obviously want to enable our subscribers to have that bi-directional conversation. So leveraging the reply notes, I'm going to drag not one, but two replies out onto the canvas and join those up to the SMS. Now by joining those responses up to the SMS, it's telling Pendula what this response is in context to. So what is it in relation to? So in this case, we have our upsell path, which I will relabel. And in our upsell path, we're going to have um, some keywords, which I'm simply going to define just through typing them out, which might be, um, yes, yep, uh, uh, yeah, whatever the case may be, sounds great. I can define as many of these keywords and responses, which is going to indicate someone's intention to upgrade to this particular offer. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And on the other side, I'm gonna define the other response that we're enabling in this particular experience. So in this case, we might have some keyword, which is top up. Uh, I might put in top uh, separately and up separately. But once again, there really isn't any limitation to the keywords and phrases that is going to associate someone's intention in this particular case. Now notice whilst I'm doing this, I'm not writing any code um, or relying on uh, any technical resources. It's simple, declarative, drag and drop, um, and keyword driven configuration. Now, off the back of someone responding in a um, certain form, and in this case, it's someone indicating that they would like to top up, uh, they would like to upsell, I should say, 
um, what we want to do is we want to introduce a little bit of conversation into this particular experience. So um, in certain cases, you might not want to take someone's first response as you know uh, their absolute intention. So in this case, I'm going to drag across one more SMS after someone's responded back. And what I'll be doing is I'll be confirming that back with that individual. So great, just confirming that you'd like to upgrade to this particular plan. Simply reply with confirm and we'll go ahead and make that change automatically. So subsequently, I'll be joining that up to the reply and then adding in one more response into this experience. Once again, I'll join up the response node to the outbound SMS. However, in this case, my keywords that are going to indicate um, someone's intention is going to be either confirm, and I might actually let them respond with confirm as well. Now, I'm not going to apply any case sensitivity. I'm going to allow them to respond back in any form of confirm or confirmed. But really, once that's happened and someone has indicated in this case that they would like to upsell or upgrade or um, move on to that next rate plan, we want to make sure that we're uh, enabling that um, on that channel. So we don't want to respond back to Sally and say, great, Sally, we'll make that change in 24 hours or we'll have someone call you to apply that upgrade. We want to make sure that the experience for Sally is a seamless one and that it all happens seamlessly um, through this particular experience that we're defining here. So because we're talking about an upsell, Sally's an existing subscriber. She has a rate plan which she's currently on. We don't want to, we want to make sure, I should say, we want to make sure that we're not going to charge her twice. So first of all, I'm going to automate the removal of her existing rate plan. So what I'll be doing is dragging a remove rate plan node and I'll be selecting from the product catalog in Zora, so my Acme mobile product catalog, and I'll be removing her existing plan, which is that $30 unlimited plan. Now, I don't need to provide a subscription location because we are working within the confines of Zora. This is really only used when we're jumping through things like uh, a Salesforce or a CRM into Zora from the same experience. So in that case, I'm simply going to specify the contract effective date and the service activation date as today. We're using uh, date formulas once again to make sure that this is enacted in real time and it's a seamless uh, amendment for, for Sally's subscription. I'll be joining that up and relabeling that so we can uh, understand what that action actually is, uh, is doing. And then off the back of that, I'll also be adding a rate plan simultaneously. So we're able to automate these actions through this experience here without having to manually make any updates um, from a salesperson perspective uh, within Zora. So once again, specifying the Acme mobile product catalog in Zora, and I have my $40, 40 gigabyte three month uh, rate plan there, which will be applying for anyone that does want to upsell to this product. Once again, date literals to um, make sure that this is seamless and this does uh, occur when the person does opt into it. And at this time I will be, uh, whoops, I will not be specifying remove. I will be labeling that as add accordingly. Now finally, um, just to close out the experience, uh, it's always best practice, especially from a conversational perspective, to come back to the customer to confirm the, uh, the action. So in this case, I'm simply going to drop across an SMS to finalise this experience for Sally. And it is a final confirmation template that I have set up. So um, thanks, uh, you're all set. You know, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Now, we might have a support flow that we might want to configure off the back of that, which might recognise some specific keywords or some language um, of someone indicating they'd like a callback um, or some assistance with uh, something like this change. But in this case, we're going to kind of close out the, uh, the conversation here. Now, very quickly, just on the other side, we did enable kind of like a cross sell um, example here. So if anyone did reply with top up uh, or any variation of that, I simply want to go ahead and um, uh, make that change automatically for them. Now, because they're not upgrading in this case, we might want to apply that action straight away. So in this case, I'm going to add a rate plan after someone's indicated that they would like to top up. Waiting for my product catalog, adding the specific um, uh, product in this case, 
once again with the contract effective and service activation date. And confirming that back with the customer. So final confirmation, once again, just to provide that um, acknowledgement that we have actually understood what someone's intention was. Now my path is starting to look a little bit messy. So I'm gonna click the line button here in the top corner. And we now have a nice, neat and easy to follow path so that when I come back to this, I can understand exactly how Sally or how a subscriber would be flowing through this experience and what's gonna occur at each stage. So that's really a very quick demonstration on how you can enable these types of experiences. Uh, what I will do very, very quickly is just navigate now to um, a CRM, just to give you some visibility as to what it looks like from a, uh, I guess, an a, a audit trail perspective or an activity history perspective. So we do have many customers that use both Zora and Salesforce. In those instances, we do sync all of the communication back to something like a Salesforce, whereby you can manage exceptions and have conversations um, with subscribers through a one-to-one -one interface. So this console allows me to have those one-to-one -one, um, conversations. So how can I help? I might want to type in here. I can drop in templates. Um, I can also view the activity as well. So for Ben, the subscriber that lives in Salesforce, I can see any conversation that I'd had with him, regardless of whether this was an experience that I triggered from a, a Zora perspective or a, a Salesforce or a CRM one for that matter. We do have visibility from a service and a sales perspective for users within organizations that don't necessarily live in Zora uh, and may not be viewing Pendula um, from this perspective which really might only be aligned to your marketing users, um, your product managers, um, or really anyone that might be defining these particular um, customer journeys. Um, now, that's really it um, for the demonstration portion of this, um, this session. Um, I will um, hand back to Alex uh, to sort of uh, finalize and open up to questions. Thanks, Ben. You know, the, the, the real thing to take from what you've seen today here and really echoing what we went through with Sally and Acme, what Pendula presents here is not a solution, as we, as we like to say. We're presenting a capability for you guys to create your own solutions. Now, these journeys that we can build here are very focused on how we can create this conversation back and forth with our salaries and really build upon this. We can have a conversation that has question that results in a different question that results in a different question. We can use this in so many ways. What we really want you guys to take out of this today is how could you create your experience for Sally using a tool like this or a similar tool? Um, there have been a few questions. I, I am going to answer a few um, directly that I haven't answered yet. I also will just touch on a few that have come through um, so far um, that, I, that have already been answered. Um, so we had a question, uh, getting the voice heard of Sally is something that I agree uh, is extremely important. Um, great to hear that. Uh, on top of this, could you add value to any interaction by understanding how Sally is using the service? And do we have any examples of this? Really good question. So it comes back to you know, two sides to how you could use a tool like this. The first is, yes, we can make offers. We can ask, we can allow people to self-serve using you know, a text or a, an email or a WhatsApp. But how do we get feedback from them? Um, and how do we then change our reactions as a result for this? Um, so Ben did not show this, but in the reply node, um, there is a thing that is called any reply. Uh, and Ben, I'm not sure if you can navigate to that quickly. Any reply enables us to collect feedback. Now, of course, when we start moving into these worlds where we are asking people to provide free text responses and any reply, which is feedback driven, uh, is going to have to be analyzed by a person. But what we can do is prompt someone like Sally saying, if you ever have any issues or if you have any questions uh, that are beyond this, or if you'd like to provide any feedback, uh, could you do that? And that's where any reply can be used. Now, on top of that, we can also use structured feedback responses on how the service has been used. And we've seen this 
the several telecommunication providers um, that we uh, have as customers today, where we might ask them several prompted responses. How are you enjoying your service today? Are you having any service issues? Are you, you know, do you have enough usage for what you're using? Uh, are you valuing the service? And based on what their responses are, we can either provide them next best actions or next best offers as a result for that. Um, so I hope that, that answers that, that question. If there's not, please feel free to drop that into the question themselves. Um, there was another question on how does Zura operate within Zura Workflow? A really good question. Um, now, Zura Workflow is a really a provisioning tool, right? This is trying to enable our orchestration in the back end. It's a really powerful capability and I'm sure lots of you already use within your business. Um, now, Zora Workflow has the ability to automatically trigger any Pendulum Flow, and Pendulum Flow can also trigger any Zora Workflow in itself. So think about our workflow tool in Zora as the capability that's enabling the downstream provisioning of these added products. And once they are provisioned, we can then go and confirm that back to our customer. Uh, I'll just touch on a few questions that we have answered in text just to cover them off. Can target filtering be done using custom fields from a Zora object? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as soon as you add any Zora field, uh, any custom Zora field into Zora, um, you'll automatically see that appearing within this Pendulum interface here. Uh, these Alex. tools, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry, Steve, I just for the rest of your friends. Can you, uh, can you maybe tell a bit more, um, the customers which are using the service already right now, what are the most common use cases that they are automating right now to set up the, the experience? What are the most great, common use cases? Great question, Timo, great question. Uh, we, we like to separate into three core areas as, as the main use cases. The first one is a multi-area, one, one that we've really touched on today. Upsell, cross-sell, repeat, renew. I'm sure those are all very familiar terms with everyone here. You can see how those services would, would definitely you know, exist within a subscriber lifecycle and be easily enabled by the tool. The second use case is what we like to call service. So this is everything from service disruptions to pausing the service to you know, understanding, am I using, am I getting what my usage was last month? You know, what, what, whatever the service requirements are, do we need to have someone come out to your house to install something? Um, is your washing machine uh, you know, due for a service in three months? Whatever that would be. So all the journeys related to that. And again, you can see how a two-way conversation would really cover that. And the third one, and this was, was answered by one of our attendees, um, asked by one of our attendees, is gathering feedback and, and collecting information from our customer. So there are the three use cases. Um, happy to you know, talk through any specific ones uh, with anyone offline um, around set verticals, you know, around media, around white goods subscriber experiences, around SaaS uh, businesses. Uh, energy, utilities, education, all really great examples of those three core buckets of upsell, cross-sell, repeat, renew, service, and collecting information or feedback. Okay, makes sense, thank you. Great, no worries. Um, now, another example that we had here as well was, can we use an example of usage information? Love a usage-based use case. This is a, a perfect example of where we will find a real milestone happening in a customer's uh, life cycle. Uh, now, fortunately within Pendula, we also have access to the Zora usage feed and those objects. And using our filtering, we can create uh, greater than or less than statements. Uh, now with that, we can create really great experiences. And then one we have is with a prepaid mobile provider. Uh, and when someone reaches 90% of their allocation, um, for their month, uh, what we do is we trigger an upsell journey where we say, would you like to add an extra gigabyte of data for another $10, for instance? Um, so absolutely, we can jump on that usage information and a really powerful way to hit those key milestones within Sally's uh, experience and using your services. Uh, now, the, uh, I don't see any other questions. I might just pause for um, five, six seconds if anyone else wants to ask any other questions. Uh, if not, we can uh, shift in back over to Timo and Timo can talk about uh, how this can, um, ha ha really what the next steps are here. Yeah. 
Yeah, do you mind if I just take that share screen back? Thank you. Timo, over to you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, thank you, Alec. Thank you for, for doing the demonstration and uh, hopefully for all the attendees. It was an, 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 an useful, uh, useful experience, uh, at least what, what you gave us. Um, it was just a one hour session, yeah? So telling that we are telling you guys, um, yeah, what we can offer you, how we see the evolution of the subscription economy. Um, I think it's too short in one hour to, to, to do a deep dive and also to do a more personal deep dive. So um, yeah, so what we can what, what we can offer you, what we are definitely happy to offer you whenever you would like to have a more deep dive um, in the possibilities of creating a subscription experiences. We love to set up with you a one hour workshop and that's why we can do with you and subscriber experience help check. Um, we can we can discuss with you your path. We can discuss with you your challenges, and uh, what you would like to achieve. And um, yeah, feel free to to contact us on that. Um, I think Tim. I think we will follow up. We will send out a follow up. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone. Thanks uh, Alex and Ben and Timo, uh, and thanks everyone for attending. Uh, we will be sending a follow up with the recording and with a, a quick yeah. overview of the subscription experience workshop um, and, a, and a landing page that'll give a little bit more detail as well. So we're looking forward to following up with you all and, and connecting with you uh, individually one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Well, I think in that case, I think we are all done. I think, uh, well, we are uh, six minutes early, so that's good. I think everybody is still in busy day today. Uh, not you guys in Australia. I think for you, it's time to go. Uh, I think, what is it? Eight o'clock right now Thor? in the evening, almost, I think. Okay, so That's from right, my side, yeah. Scripps Factory, yeah, thank you very much. Alex, anything you would like to add and to say goodbye? Uh, really echoing what you're saying there, Timo. Uh, happy to share our experiences and how we have helped other businesses in the past. Uh, Timo and his team, with our team, we've got, got some really good insights as to how the tool can you know, help a variety of use cases. And, and of course, you know, if anyone would like to see um, another demonstration more tailored to themselves, um, that is a you know, really great leader out of that one hour subscriber experience workshop. Um, very light on, so give you some really handy, handy hit points for you to you know, target on and you know, really give you an external assessment of how your experience looks like. Uh, and of course, you know, we are really passionate about what we're doing here and we, we want to see your experience you know, being one like Acme and Sally's experience. Um, so thanks for today. Thank you for Timo as well and the team at yep. the subscription uh, factory and helping putting this all together. Okay then. Great. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone.